Part 1. The Problem of Deformed Markets The Freed Market William Gillis, 2007 One of the tactics I've taken up in the anarchist economics wars is to refer to our modern corporatist, mercantilist, Lovecraftian mix of economic systems as capitalism, and when referencing ANCAPs, go out of my way to use anarcho-capitalist and anarcho-capitalist as distinct labels. These have proved decent, if not pretty effective, ways of kicking a wedge into their thinking and forcing a degree of nuance into the discussion. But their distinctions, primarily aimed at the willfully ignorant, bullying Reds, who, while certainly annoying, are nowhere near as atrocious as the out-and-out vulgar libertarians. The corporate apologists who actually approve of the modern cesspit the Reds call capitalism, you know the ones, the contrarian brats who consider Somalia a utopia, the ones that fit the Reds' stereotypes so hardcore that all intelligence is immediately sucked into an event horizon of poor people obviously deserve to starve, screw em. And, yeah, well, after the revolution, we'll put your family in death camps and expropriate all your stuff. Well, by blessed typo, I've stumbled across a very effective counter to them. Instead of referring to the behavior and dynamics of the free market, I refer instead to a freed market. You'd be surprised how much of a difference a change of tense can make. Free market makes it sound like such a thing already exists, and thus passively perpetuates the red myth that corporatism and wanton accumulation of capital are the natural consequences of free association and competition between individuals. It is not. But freed has an element of distance and, what's more, a degree of action to it. It becomes so much easier to state things like, freed markets don't have corporations. A freed market naturally equalizes wealth. Social hierarchy is by definition inefficient, and this is particularly evident in freed markets. It moves us out of the present tense and into the theoretical realm of after the revolution, where, like the Reds, we can still use present-day examples to back theory, but we're not tied into implicitly defending every horror in today's market. It's easier to pick out separate mechanisms in the market and make distinctions, also, have I mentioned that it makes an implicit call to action? I don't know if anyone else has stumbled over this before, but it's been useful and I felt I should share.